Welcome everybody back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. For today's episode, we're going to be talking about the recent rumors about Juan Soto that he is reportedly, reportedly the Padres are the front runner to acquire him. Um, we've heard this, uh, we heard this a little bit last trade deadline. So I'm not going to buy super heavily into the fact that that they're that they're reportedly the front runner because at this point it doesn't really matter if you're the front runner. You haven't landed Juan Soto. We don't really know how that's going to look out. So for today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about. Just the idea of landing him. Chase is not a big fan of bringing him in. I'm a big fan of bringing him in. At the same time, I do not think it's Soto or Bust. Um, Isaac wants Soto as well. Isaac doesn't think it's Soto, is bust, or Soto or Bust either. Um, I know there's a lot of Padre fans that really feel like, okay, you either get Juan Soto or you miss the playoffs if you don't, don't get him. Don't think that's the case, um, but the Padres are getting heavily, heavily linked to him. Uh, a couple other teams that have been in the mix are the Cardinals, the Yankees, the Mets. I know the Dodgers haven't really been in too much. I'm going to toss the Dodgers in there as well. I think they could definitely be a team that ends up wanting to go get him. Um, so we'll see how it plays out. But there's there's a lot of teams that are definitely trying to acquire Juan Soto. And apparently the Padres, you know, have the farm system to do it. So you go and we we look at a, at a couple of tweets here. This is the big one, uh, the Buster Only tweet. As of Thursday morning, some rival execs perceive that the Padres appear to be the front runner to land Juan Soto. Uh John Heyman talks about it too. We got Bleacher Report talking about it. Um, so a lot of a lot of stuff here about the Padres potentially getting Juan Soto. Um, but Chase, you want to talk a little bit about one, the Padres being the front runner, how much you kind of feel like that is accurate, um, and two, what do you think about the Padres going after Juan Soto? See, I'm hit or miss with like the whole thing about the Padres being the front runners because every time AJ Preller has made a trade. Every time the Padres have been linked heavily to this guy and, and have been the front runners, the deal has always somewhat fallen through. Every time it's been like heavily publicized and just kind of out there, it just never really works out for the Padres. We saw that last year with the Scherzer deal. We saw that, I think, this offseason with one of the other deals, and I'm forgetting who it is. But every time the Padres trades kind of get lead, it doesn't really really work out for them. Secondly, I'm just not sure sure about how big of a package is going to be to get Juan Soto you know it's been I think reported that they want five top 10 prospects and then if not another player on top of that if not it was one MLB player and then four top 10 prospects which depending on who it is you can be completely fine and give up and go to Juan Soto depending on who the MLB ready player is they I know they're kind of shooting for Abrams kind of don't want to do that because you know I'd much rather get rid of Hosmer, move Cronenworth the first, move Abrams the second, and platoon between Abrams and Kim, upgrade center field, and then upgrade the bullpen. I think that's a much better way to go about it. Thirdly, my whole problem with the thing is I believe Juan Soto came out and said that he wouldn't re-sign with any of the teams that trade for him because he wants to test the free agent market. So if you trade the entire farm and – try to re-sign him, he probably won't re-sign with us. He's probably going to move to a bigger market team that can pay him more. Considering he turned down $440 million from the Nationals, I know which are a garbage organization right now, but $440 million is $440 million. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where do you trade the farm in hopes that Juan Soto resigns and then him just walk and then you kind of get stuck without – all those guys that you were hoping to develop and turn into key pieces for the team and put them on cheap deals. And then you can build around that. You can go out and get different guys to help build the team. I mean, we are losing three starters after this year. We're going to re-sign either one or two of them. You can't get all three. And then we lose another two, if not three, the year after that, depending on how Nick Martinez decides to either opt in or opt out of his contract. Cause he does have opt out clauses out there every single season. So you do that and you try to resign Juan Soto. You don't have a lot of money to play with for the next three years because Eric Cosmer is still here. Sure, you lose Will Myers and his contract, but you're still paying Machado and Tatis. And Tatis's contract is going to kick up a little bit. Juan Soto is getting paid $17 million, And now you got all these pitchers to resign. And then all the talent that you had in the minor league systems and hoping to develop and turn into MLB-ready players, if not star players, you don't have any more, and so you're going to have to go for cheap rentals on one-year deals or uh, guys coming off injury on a prove-it deal. 
So that's the only reason I'm not totally on board with it. It's just kind of a lot of question marks in the future. Is he going to resign with us? How much is it really going to cost? Which players do we have to give up? How bad does that mess up the rotation? Can we fix the rotation on cheaper options, one-year deals? It, it just makes it a little bit harder to do than if we didn't trade for Juan Soto and fix some of the plugs that we have right now. Yeah, and and I also I agree with a lot of the stuff you're saying. I think the biggest, like the scariest part for them potentially going out and, and trading right the future for Juan Soto is if you go and trade the, the future and then he does not resign. Because if he does not resign, that changes everything a lot, in my opinion. I think the expectation is if you're going to get him, you're also going to extend him to a deal that looks to be about 15 years, 500 million. But if he ends up walking after you trade everything for him, you're going to be in a pretty tough spot. Now, you can argue, hey, it's worth it if you go in, in those, you know, in this year and then the next two years, in one of those years, you win the World Series. That's a lot of pressure to go win the World Series in that three year span. Um, I do think that in terms of the Padres being able to keep a contending team while having Manny, Tatis, and Soto on a big deal, I think that is totally feasible. I think you can absolutely do that because let's look at where the Padres are at right now. Um, look at some of the contracts they have. They have Drew Pomeranz making $10 million. They got Will Myers making twenty. They got Hosmer making twenty. That's $50 million right there between three guys that are contributing pretty much nothing. Um, so if we look at a lot of the deals, like the Padres have given out so many bad contracts, and they're still 10 games over 500 as we speak. Um, they also haven't had Dottis this year. So I do think in terms of going and paying him, I think it makes a ton of sense. But Chase, I think that your question marks of like, hey, is he going to go and test the market and then walk after the Padres trade everything for him? I think those are completely fair. I'm kind of going in with the assumption that you're going to be able to keep him, um, which is not entirely like accurate. That's not entirely going to be the case. So I think that if you're going to make this deal, I think you have to feel pretty confidently in your ability to re-sign Juan Soto. So that's kind of the first like thing that you have to have in this contract, right? Or in this, in this trade. Um, second is that you're going to lose a lot of pieces. I still think if you lose a lot of pieces, I do think you can shore up the the starting rotation. I think we saw, you know, Sean Manaya coming coming over this year, and the Padres don't end up really trading that much to go get him. I think there's always guys in the market you can go to get kind of in the in the back end of the bullpen. You in this deal, I doubt that Gore would be a part of it just because he's hurt. Maybe he is, but if you don't trade Gore, you have Robbie Snelling, Dylan Lesko, and Mackenzie Gore as kind of like your younger future. You still have Robert Gasser potentially, even though he's been rumored in this deal. Um, but you have still a lot of arms that are a couple years away but are coming up. So if you have guys for a couple years on proven deals, you play out Darvish's deal, you play out Snell's deal, those guys are going to be ready to kind of be the front-end starters for your rotation. So I think that's the thought when it comes from a team-building perspective is that you can go after and sign these other guys. I also think another assumption I have is if you get Juan Soto, I, I think the Padres will go deep into the luxury tax. One – because they are trying to build a, a powerhouse team. Two, they're going to be making so much more money when you have Juan Soto and Fernando Tatis, Manny Machado. I think that you can, if you get Juan Soto, in my opinion, you're definitely going to bring back Musgrove. Um, I just think it puts the Padres in a whole different dynamic from a how willing are you to spend. I think it puts them a lot closer to the Dodgers and the Mets than it does you know, some of the other teams, some of the past payrolls we've seen on the, on the Padres because – they want to improve their TV deal. They want to make more money off of it. If you look at the TV deal that they have compared to the top markets in the MLB, it's not even close. And over the past couple of years, the Padres have been top of top of the league in attendance. They've been, you know, a lot of fans have been showing up um, to the games and the Padres are building a, a much larger market. I think it's a very good strategy to go get Juan Soto and really try to build that market and really make yourself one of the the, the teams that is like a, a pillar of the MLB in terms of marketability. And I think that having Juan Soto helps with that a lot. So that's why I like the idea of doing it is because I don't think that the luxury tax really becomes an issue uh, moving forward. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely tough because if you do go get him, like there is a significant risk in going and getting him and then having him walk. Um, so that's why I still like the idea of getting him. Uh, I definitely think that there's a, a significant chance that they do add him. Uh, what would you put like, I know it's hard to ballpark, but what would you put like the per, the chance that the Padres actually get Juan Soto? Because you have to bring in the Cardinals are legit contenders for him. It really depends on how like picky the Nationals are with their offer. I know they're trying to get the best of the best offers from every single team. It's, it's less than fifty percent. 
I'm going to go 30 to 40%. Just I still even think 40% is too high. I think it's around 30%. I mean, just because it really depends on what the Padres are going to have to give up. And if they can move those pieces and shore up like center field, the bullpen, they can get an upgrade at first instead. I think they might go that route instead of trading for Juan Soto. It just really depends on the package. So I'm, I'm going to go around 30% just because there's a lot of uncertainty whether or not he stays. There's a lot of uncertainty whether or not the trade package that the Nats want will be what the Padres are willing to give up. Yeah, I, I'm there with you. And I, I think um, I'm even going to go lower. I'm going to go 20% just because you look at all the factors. One, the Nationals could just hold them because they have him under contract. It's pretty rare that a guy gets traded that's this good. Um, you could easily go and try to trade him in the offseason, though you might not get as much. You might not get a team like the Padres kind of desperate and willing to move a lot more. Um, but they could easily just hold him. And there's a significant chance that they do that. There's also other teams that are in play that could go get him. So you kind of add in all the factors. There's also, you know, the Padres could be hesitant to make the move because they don't think they're going to be able to re-sign him. So there's a lot of factors at play. Um, I do think that they're going to be aggressive and, and really like make multiple offers and try to get something done. Um, but I think 20%, like I think that's a, that's a fifth of the chance of, of landing a, a superstar player. That's still pretty high. Um, so I think it's like 20%. Um, I am in no means feel like it's like, oh, there's a lock that Soto is going to be a Padre. No, absolutely not. Especially after last year, especially after some of these trade deadlines. Um you were bringing up some trades falling through. You had the Mets trade earlier this year that fell through with Eric Hosmer going to the Mets um, that basically got released and then it fell through, didn't happen. So we've seen a lot of those with the Padres. So I think 20 to 30%. I think that's, I, I still think that's a pretty high chance of adding a guy like Juan Soto at 23 years old. So if you guys think we're being super low on this, I, I still think that's pretty high. Um, but yeah, it, it should not be over 50%. No chance, Chase. Uh, but anything else on the uh, the Juan Soto rumors and the idea of adding him that you want to bring up before we before we take off? Um, just don't get your hopes up, guys. Like, you don't see guys like Juan Soto get traded every single day. Like, the whole reason Mookie got traded was because the Dodgers were also willing to eat David Price's contract. The Nats came out and said, we're not going to add anyone to Juan Soto because we want the best possible package just for Juan Soto so that they the teams can't get rid of, like, okay, well, you know what, we'll eat Steven Strasburg's contract, so we have to give you less. That said, no, we're not going to do that. We want the best possible package just for Juan Soto. So I know a lot of uh, – there was a lot of meme trades for, like, oh, the Yankees get – Juan Soto and Steven Strasburg, and they give up like some mid-tier prospect just because of how bad Steven Strasburg's contract is, nothing like that would ever happen. So it, it's a pretty low chance, and even me saying 30% is quite optimistic. So don't get your hopes up. Yeah, I like that we we have this this thing on Juan Soto. We're like, all right, guys, do not get your hopes up. But I, I definitely think there still could be a chance. Um, we'll see how it all goes, though, but – I don't know. It's going to be a significant prospect capital that would go to the Nationals to acquire him. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I think that I'm excited to see if it happens. I would love if they do end up landing him. Um, they're getting heavily linked to him, so we're going to keep talking about this. Um, later tonight, not Chase, but I believe Isaac, I, and Ryan um, are going to be on America's Finest Sports just kind of doing an MLB trade deadline preview. Um, I will post that on Fire Talks YouTube in like one of our posts uh, later this afternoon. But I don't know. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to see how the whole trade deadline goes. I think even if you don't land Juan Soto, I think there's still plenty of guys that you can go and and get to improve this team drastically. But I think that's probably gonna do it for today's episode. Tomorrow we're gonna have an episode out on bullpen potential bullpen guys that the Padres could be going after because as we've seen over this past Tiger series, the bullpen is a spot that the Padres must address. Um, and there's numerous guys that are available on the market right now that they can go after. So we're going to be going over a handful of those guys. But if you guys want to check that out, that'll probably be out sometime around noon tomorrow. But thank you guys for listening. And from my perspective, I hope we land on Soto. Chase, I know you don't feel the same way, but I really hope we do end up getting him. But we'll talk to you guys tomorrow about the bullpen. And then on Sunday, we'll be going live um, discussing the Padres twin series. And there'll hopefully be some trades that we'll be discussing beforehand as well. But until then, we'll talk to you guys soon.